Hello everyone, we will now continue with the clothing comfort uh, related to thermal transmission. In earlier uh, segment, we have discussed the different parameters related to human uh, thermophysiological uh, comfort and also we have discussed the instruments for thermal transmission, measurement of thermal transmission like tog meter, guarded hot plate and instruments for measuring the thermal transmission at the flame uh, at flame condition and radiative heat conditions. And also we have discussed various factors which affect the thermal comfort. Now we will start the thermal transmission parameters. So, for any comfort or any thermal transmission related uh, measurement, we need to know some practical parameters because the instruments always give the parameters which are related to heat transmission directly, but those parameters may not be always used in practical situation. So, for comparison of practical thermal related thermal insulation related uh, characteristics, we need to know few practical parameters. So, this basically what we have learnt till now, this we have studied that the thermal resistance of textile material is measured in SI unit, it is in degree Kelvin meter square by watt. So, it is just reciprocal of thermal transmittance. So, what is this uh, resistance? As we know, it is a defined as the ratio between the temperature difference between two phases of material, if in case in our case it is a, a textile material. So, in uh, degree Kelvin and this with the rate of heat transfer per unit area that is watt per square meter. So, if we take the ratio of this, so we will get the thermal resistance basically the it is a reciprocal of heat flux. The heat flux is expressed in terms of watt per degree Kelvin per meter square. So, the thermal resistance measurement that we can we have seen we can measure in uh, uh, the different instruments like in uh, from tog meter we can measure or by using sweating guarded hot plate. So, a practical unit is used for thermal resistance measurement it is called tog which is one tenth of SI unit that is one tog is equal to one tenth of meter square degree Kelvin per watt. Okay. So, and another very practical unit which is act, which is used for uh, measurement of or expression of thermal resistance of clothing. So, clo, clo this term comes from the clothing. So, if we uh, in other instruments like SI unit or TOG, we normally measure the thermal resistance in terms of a fabric form okay, in flat sheet form, but if we talk about the overall clothing, the thermal transmission about or thermal insulation of overall clothing, then we use the term clo and clo we uh, there is an approximate relationship it is 1.55 multiplied by tog is equal to 1 clo. So, this derivation we will try to see, we will do this derivation re relationship, we will try to derive this relationship. So, there are various uh, parameters which, ec which we can express for measuring the actual thermal comfort of through fabric, thermal transmission through fabric. So, these are uh, basically one is met. Mate term is 
widely used in human thermal comfort met this term this comes from the term metabolic heat. This is the metabolic metabolic heat. Clo, clo is another term for expressing the thermal comfort of total clothing, it is not the fabric as we have mentioned. Another term is tog. So, these three terms met clo and tog they are related with the thermal transmission. Along with that permeability index which is used for uh, measuring the thermal uh, transmission characteristics along with the moisture vapor transmission. So, all these four characteristics for what these four parameters will try to measure okay, met. So, what is met? It is just used to quantify the metabolic heat. So, metabolic metabolism of man when he is resting and sitting under air condition of that condition of thermal comfort. So, a person when he is sitting and resting position comfortably, so that at that situation whatever metabolic heat he is producing it is called met. So, typically the the value of one met is 50 kilo calorie per square meter hour. So, if we convert it to watt per square meter it comes out to be 58.2 watts per square meter. So, this value so if we see the table here in the table if we see for a sleeping person it is a 35 around 35 watt per square meter. So, that is a 30 to 35 square meter watt per square meter and sitting quietly a person it is around 55 to 65. So, that it is coming within that range. So, so it comes out to be 58.2 that is the specific value it is given. So, one mate is equal to 50 kilo calorie per square meter hour or 58 watt per square meter. So, mate has nothing to do with the clothing it is only it is a metabolic heat it shows, but why do you need uh, to know about mate for clothing comfort for uh, thermal insulation of clothing, because the this particular heat has to be balanced by clothing that whatever this heat is generated. So, this heat has to come out has to be transmitted through the clothing. So, that is how the clothing comfort clothing thermal insulation is related with mate. Now, try to see what is clo. So, clo as we have mentioned it is a thermal insulation of to overall clothing it is not only uh, one particular gar garment it is clo is actually it is a totality a total uh, garment including tops, bottoms, inner wear everything. So, one clo is defined as the insulation of clothing system clothing system means it is a total clothing including even socks, gloves everything. So, total clothing system that requires to maintain a sitting resting average male comfortable in a normally ventilated room. What is ventilated room? It is defined the air velocity has to be 0.1 meter per second and the temperature will be around 21 degree Celsius and relative humidity will be less than 50 percent. So, that means, at that condition when a person actually generates one mate that to balance that heat th that whatever thermal insulation is required that is one clo of uh, clothing. So, for clothing clo and mate is directly related. So, this value of clo this then can be derived from the value of mate. So, let us see the assumption is that it is assumed that 24 percent of metabolic heat is lost through other process other than fabric. So, this is may be uh, through skin which is not covered by the clothing and the respiration. So, respiration and uh, respiration through the skin, 
respiration that evaporative heat loss through respiration these are not actually taken into account, but other than this. So, that this is actually assumed that 24 percent of the total heat metabolic heat is transmitted through this all these processes and that means, it is a 50 multiplied by 0 0.25 it is coming out to be 12 kilo calorie per square meter hour is lost through evaporation respiration etcetera. And remaining 38 kilo calorie per square meter hour the, the, this heat will be transmitted through the clothing. That means, our clothing has to take care of this 38 kilo calorie heat. So, that that heat the transmission that is for that it requires one clo. So, so, 38 kilo calorie. So, that uh, the comfortable man uh, the mean skin of uh, person is around 33 degree Celsius. So, that means, the a person when he is sitting at a room of 21 degree Celsius that air conditioned room the mean screen temperature is 33 degree Celsius. So, that is the comfortable skin temperature. So, that temperature and the room temperature is 21 degree Celsius that is assumed. So, that let us see the total heat transmission. So, total heat transmission through that it is a that 33 that the total insulation required by the clothing is 33 minus 21 divided by this 38. So, that is the total insulation required by the total system clothing system and clothing system it is including the insulation of air. So, that 0 0.32 is the insulation of the clothing system which includes the air insulation. So, let us see the insulation of air insulation of air is 0.14. So, that is the standard at standard room the insulation is 0.14 which means we require the clothing insulation 0.32 minus 0.14. So, that is the insulation of clothing required. So, 0 0.18 meter square degree Celsius hour per kilo calorie. So, that insulation is required for clothing and this is the basically equivalent to one clo. So, this actually we have seen this one clo value it comes from the mate value. So, it is related to it. So, one clo is equal to 0.1818 square meter degree Celsius hour per kilo calorie that is the one clo. Okay. So, one clo if we divide if we convert into watt kilo calorie to watt. So, it is come out to comes out to be 0 0.155 meter square degree Celsius watt. So, that is the effective insulation of clothing. So, the one clo is equal to 0 0.155. Now, let us see. So, the relations uh, this is the SI unit SI unit and relationship between SI unit and TOG we have seen it is one tenth. So, if we convert it is a one tenth. So, TOG is also a unit of thermal insulation as we have discussed is defined as the thermal resistance that is able to maintain a temperature gradient of 0 0.1 degree Celsius with a heat flux of 1 watt per square meter. So, that means, it is a it is a one tenth of a SI unit finally, we the relationship between clo and TOG it comes out to be 1 clo is equal to 1.55 TOG. So, that that is the relationship. So, with this this practical unit we can now totally we can evaluate the insulation of clothing and this there are standard values available for insulation. So, if we see the clo value. So, clo value here it is a typical example of clo value. So, person without any cloth that means, he does not have any cloth. So, that means, the clothing insulation is 0. So, here the clo value is equal is 0. A person with a short and a t shirt 
like t shirt its total clo value is around 0.3 these are the typical values so person with uh, this type of full trouser and uh, the t shirt it come out comes out to be 0.5 so this is it's it is one clo so it's a 1.8 clo and this is a three uh, around three close so th this way the total clo value increases so here what does it mean one clo or what does it mean 0.5 clo so that means this fabric it it actually provides a insulation of 0.5 clo so if a person is producing the one mat one mat so that he is if he is sitting idle in uh, well ventilated air conditioned room this person will be little bit he will feel little bit cooler. So, if it is one may one clo that means, he will balance with the one mate. So, that is how we can uh, we can get the in we can uh, derive the insulation of uh, clothing and we can use this value clo value to propose to select a fabric or clothing ensemble for particular application. Now, let us see how to use this clo value for actually clo value it is a insulation that means, this type of clo value will be used for cold temperature and this clo value is used for developing the clothing for extreme cold uh, climate clothing. Now, try to see how the clo value is actually added. So, normally this clo values of individual component individual garments are known. So, if it is known, so that means that we can simply add this all this clo value we will get the total clo value of the clothing system. If we see here a shirt it is a point one nine this point zero four point one one and so socks is 0 0.02. So, if we add it is a it comes out to be 0.38. So, this will give us a, a total clo value of 0.38 and this is 0 0.191. So, this value this will be actually a, uh, make a this total segment total uh, total combination will make a person comfortable when he is generating one mate. So, the this is a typical curve which is known as that I R E Q that means, in required insulation curve. So, this is uh, this typical curve will guide us to select the clothing clo value total insulation required to for a total clothing. Okay. So, for at different condition different at different temperature level sub zero temperature level and at different physical condition. So, let us try to see. So, this figure I R E Q values these are the I R E Q value in y axis it is a for low physiological strain that means, a part to keep a person comfortable. So, we need a clothing of this type of clo value. So, that means, neutral thermal sensation that means, no he is actually thermally comfortable. So, these values are given for different activities. Now, try to see. So, for uh, at a temperature environment temperature say at uh, 20 degree Celsius. So, the minus 20 degree Celsius at sub zero temperature if a person is actually working he is actually resting. If he is resting at that temperature minus 20 degree Celsius temperature. So, he needs a clothing of a clo value around 7 or 8. So, around 6 to 7 this is the type of clo value he needs. So, that means, it is a minimum clo value here. So, that means, he needs minimum 6 clo value for to make him little bit uh, comfortable he can survive, but at least he, he needs and uh, for to make him very highly comfortable he needs 7 uh, around 6.5 or 6.7 clo value. So, that which means that uh, if a person sitting idle, so he needs 
at sub zero temperature he needs a clothing of very thick in nature with high insulation. But at that temperature if a person start little work. So, the in that case he may need a clothing of little bit lower cloth. So, that insulation if he has a clothing of lower insulation that can also be sufficient that will be sufficient at that temperature minus 20 degree Celsius temperature. But if he works if he works very hard, so he may need a fabric of one cloth at one cloth fabric which is sufficient for normal ventilated room or air conditioned room, but if with that clothing he will be comfortable thermally at even at 20 minus 20 degree Celsius if he works hard. So, that way we can at different temperature this curve gives indication about the clothing requirement insulation requirement. So, from this curve one can easily design the uh, or propose different types of clothing for person at extreme cold climate. So, let us see how to calculate the calculated required insulation that is IRQ can be regarded as the cold stress index. So, that value at that temperature at particular what, what is the cold stress uh, for a particular person and how he will be comfortable for a part, uh, with a particular type of clothing. So, and using the REQ comprises three evaluation steps. So, to, uh, to use so we have to have three steps of evaluation. First is the determination of REQ for a given exposure condition. So, if we know the exposure condition and if we know the physical activity of a person, so we can determine the REQ level. Suppose a person needs to work little or needs to sleep at minus 30 degree Celsius temperature. So, from this curve we can actually evaluate what will be the thermal stress. So, at that suppose he is working little uh, little work he is doing little work. So, this is the point. So, 6 I R E Q is the cold stress of the person. So, if we know the cold stress and if we then we have to select the clothing which will give us a uh, say 6 clove value. So, then we have to compare this REQ value with the protective level of clothing that is clo uh, uh, value of clothing total clothing. So, then we can select and if suppose this value this value is uh, we are not able to get suppose 6 clo value is required. So, see if 6 clo value is, uh, is required if we do not have this uh, clothing with 6 clo then we can definitely try to use, but in that case we have to know the what is the exposure time. So, he cannot actually be comfortable at that condition for longer time. So, we have to determine the exposure time if the protection level is of lesser value than IRQ. So, we can use suppose we can use if we want if we need say 6 clo, we have a clothing of say 2 clo that means we have to decide what will be the exposure time if he wants to go for some time for a few seconds then he may go he may be allowed but if it is a longer exposure time then it will be difficult so the irq indicates the protection level as we have discussed the higher the value the greater the risk of the body heat imbalance so that value should be within at a within a limit it should not be high. If higher IRQ value that means, we should be actually careful that it may be actually it may harm the body heat imbalance and the two levels of strain that is the two there are uh, two levels one is the lower level where he is actually neutral or comfortable 
and higher level that means he is feeling slightly cooler. So, that within that range it works. So, so that that is how we actually decide which cloth has to be used and which combination we can select. So, there are various standard combinations available one can see. So, these are the different types of combinations and their total claw value are given. So, depending on the claw value suppose we need a claw value of 1.4 then we may like to select this combination one undershirt, underpant, insulated trouser, insulated jacket, sock, shoe. So, if we take this combination that means we will get a claw value of 1.4. So, accordingly we can select for a particular application. So, these are some uh, few more uh, combinations. So, sleeping bag it is a it, uh, it can give a claw value of up to 8. So, accordingly we can select. So, sleeping bag is it is a, we need very high claw value because at that time the there is no physical work. So, IREQ requirement will be very high. Now, as we have mentioned a relative measure of the ability of insulation to provide warmth that is the claw value and claw value is a it is a basically it is a, a person when he is sitting and resting position at certain uh, temperature that air conditioned uh, condition uh, temperature room and the level of insulation requirement is the of a clothing is a claw and lowest value of claw is 0 that means when a person is unclothed a nude person has a claw value of 0 because he does not have any claw, uh, cloth and the highest practical claw value is a for a any garment it is a it is a 4 uh, for Eskimo clothing. So, that type of clothing is available and winter clothing has average claw value of 1 and summer clothing average claw value of 0.6. So, this claw value we can always increase, but claw value is related with the, the total weight of the clothing. So, that we have to take care for uh, for other comfort comfortness of uh, thermal comfort or heaviness should we should not feel heaviness. So, that way we should be uh, we should be able to develop clothing of higher claw value with lower mass and another parameter which is practical parameter which is known as the permeability index. This is the combination of the dry heat transmission and moisture vapor transmission. This permeability index is an indicator of the evaporative performance of clothing. Okay. So, that where R t is the total thermal resistance of the clothing plus surface layer of air. So, this is the R t and R e t is the total evaporative resistance of clothing plus air layer. So, if we take if we combine this ratio R T by R E T represent the effectiveness in transmission of evaporative heat as compared to dry heat. So, this ratio if we if we can calculate this ratio that is the uh, for it is uh, it uh, shows the effectiveness of the evaporative transmission and uh, this is the Lewis ratio Lewis, Lewis relation is the ratio of evaporative mass transmission coefficient and convective heat transmission coefficient. So, it indicates the that uh, how much mass transmission will take place along with the evaporative heat transmission okay. and uh, the permeability index it is a uh, value it is uh, ranging from 0 to 1. So, if the fabric is totally impermeable that is no water vapor transmission is there it will give a value 0 and a completely water vapor transmission if it is there it is a 1 value. So, it, it varies from 0 to 1 value it gives indication of whatever what is the uh, water vapor permeability. Now, we will discuss the thermal transmission characteristics of clothing various factors which affect the 
thermal transmission of clothing. The factors which affect the thermal transmission properties of fabrics are first is the thermal conductivity of fiber and air content within the fabric. So, total thermal conductivity of fiber material and air. So, that actually affect the thermal, thermal uh, transmission characteristics. It is basically conductive heat transmission. So, that is basically thickness of the fabric is directly related actually affect the thermal property, thermal transmission property. Okay. That means, higher thickness means higher air entrapment are also higher thickness means sometime it is a uh, thicker material means higher quantity of fiber present. So, thickness of uh, fabric is actually directly related with the thermal transmission characteristics. Then bulk density of the fabric which means that whatever the uh, pores present in the fabric and the number of pores, size of individual pores and distribution of pores that affect the thermal transmission characteristics. So, this, this bulk characteristics or thickness they are related with the, the manufacturing technique and type of twist, type of fiber. So, all these parameters we will discuss one by one. So, one is thickness of fabric, bulk density of fabric. So, these are related with these are actually dependent on the various factors. First, let us see the fabric thickness. What are the effects of thickness of fabric on thermal transmission characteristics? So, it is well known that the thicker the fabric, higher will be the thermal resistance, because thicker fabric gives uh, better warmth due to lower thermal transmission. So, thicker fabric has got two components, either it will have more number of blockage, more number of fibers, another is higher entrapment of steel air. That means, overall the thicker fabric will give higher thermal resistance. The thermal transmittance decreases with the increase in fabric thickness. The fabric with different thickness also may give same thermal transmittance or fabric with same thickness may give the different thermal transmittance. That means, thickness is not the only criteria for uh, to, dip, uh, to measure the thermal transmission characteristics. So, other than the thickness there may be some other thermal transmission parameters. So, thickness is just not the only parameter determining the thermal transmission of fabric. So, another parameter is the mass of fabric, weight of fabric. So, fabric weight is den denoted by the mass per unit area. Normally, as the mass per unit area increases, it provides more material. So, higher mass per unit area, it is normally it gives the higher fabric insulation. So, lower thermal transmittance, okay. it is same as the fabric thickness, but there are other aspects also. That means, a knitted fabric, the lighter fabric with higher tightness factor. That means, if we have a lighter fabric with higher tightness factor or heavier fabric with lower tightness factor. So, so lighter fabric with higher tightness factor gives the lower thermal transmittance value. That means, here again the fabric weight is not the only criteria, we have to see the compactness of the structure. So, that higher tightness factor gives lower thermal transmittance means it is a basically it blocks the convective heat and radiative heat. So, irrespective of the mass per unit area and thickness of the fabric, if the fabric structure is open 
if the tightness is less that also give the higher thermal transmittance. So, higher thermal so higher uh, tightness factor gives the lower thermal transmittance this is due to blocking of the convective heat and radiative heat. On the other hand if we see the tighter fabric and the and the thermal th tighter fabric also sometime gives the lower thermal uh, higher thermal transmission it gives a lower thermal resistance. How? Because a tighter fabric if it is in jammed condition it is a it does not have any air pocket. So, that insulation due to that heat when considering heat loss by conduction that that means, if the tight fabric is there that means, there is no air pocket. So, heat transmission through conduction will be high the tighter tightly packed cotton fabric will lose more heat than uh, loose open fabric. Okay. So, so, conduction for conductive heat transmission higher conductive heat transmission we need tighter fabric with and for higher radiative and convective heat we need open fabric structure. So, this is due to the fact that jamming of yarn together with the uh, tightness of structure will give the better thermal transmission due to conduction. Also, if we see the twist, if we increase the twist level, so that means the air pocket inside the yarn structure is reduced. So, it also gives the higher higher conductivity due to the conductive heat loss. And there are studies which reveals that the transmission characteristics of fabric depend on one is the morphological characteristics of uh, morphological characteristics of fiber. So, fiber morphology if we change fiber structure internal structure of fiber which if we change the thermal transmission characteristics will change. It is dependent on the yarn structure. So, if we can incorporate the bulk in the yarn that will affect the transmission characteristics of fabric and also physical and structural characteristics of fabric. So, it depends on the fiber characteristics depend on the yarn characteristics and also the fabric characteristics. Now, let us see one by one the fiber characteristics it is basically conductivity of fiber it dependent on the molecular structure of fiber. So, it is a molecular structure it is density crystallinity crystalline orientation and mobility of molecular change in amorphous region. So, these are the factors which actually controls the thermal conductivity of particular fiber. Let us see the typical values of uh, few fibers polypropylene 340, nylon 250, polyester 140 and polyethylene 120. So, these are due to the molecular structure, density and all uh, these parameters and also for a same molecule like uh, cellulose, cellulose has got a specific heat is 1.25. So, due to the difference in morphological structure of natural cellulose that is cotton or regenerated cellulose the thermal transmission characteristics changes. So, this if some for a particular uh, uh, polymer if we change the morphological structure we can change the thermal characteristics. Even cross sectional shape of fiber that changes the thermal transmission characteristics. Not only the thermal transmission characteristics with the cross sectional shape it is air permeability moisture vapor permeability also the moisture in liquid uh, form that is wicking uh, characteristics also changes. So, we will discuss in the next segment when the effect of fiber cross section. Now, let us see few other studies 
the thermal insulation characteristics of fiber assembly vary with the fiber arrangement in the fabric. So, if the fiber arrangements are uh, parallel to the uh, lengthwise direction or if it is random. So, it affects the, the thermal transmission characteristics this are due to the orientation uh, this are due to the uh, pore structure opening structure. So, that this this affect the thermal transmission characteristics and also we know that fabric thickness obviously higher fabric thickness higher uh, entrapment of air pocket so lower will be the thermal uh, higher will be the thermal insulation so, another study it shows the thermal transmission characteristics depend on the packing density of fiber in yarn so if we can pack the yarn uh, fiber uh, densely that will affect the thermal transmission characteristics. This we will see in detail if we can disturb if we can make the bulk in the yarn we will see ultimately it affects the thermal transmission characteristics of uh, clothing. Porosity of fabric. So, fabric with higher pores will give better thermal insulation that also we will see how the pores inside the yarn will give a better thermal insulation and obviously, thickness of uh, fabric. Thermal, so as we know the fabric thickness is a major part in deciding the thermal transmission of a particular fabric. A same fabric at different level of thickness will give different thermal transmission characteristics. So, let us see a thermal resistance of fabric under different compression level. For that one instrument has been designed and developed this instrument works is just a reverse it is a upright state of guarded hot plate. So, this is a similar guarded hot plate has been developed where the red this red color plate it is a test plate and the this sky color these are the guard plates okay, side guard plates guard ring and this is earlier in guarded hot plate it was a bottom plate. So, these three plates were there and the and this is one system of fabric this is the base plate with the perforation. So, this total system this top this total system is actually placed on a cross head of a tensile tester this is a placed and this is this total system moves up and down and this bottom plate which is perforated over which fabric is placed. Now, as this is moving downward the fabric will get compressed. So, the uh, the comp that length the thickness of the fabric can be measured here and also compressional load can be measured and at, at different air velocity that means to know the convective heat loss at different compressive load that has been developed. So, this this study shows that if we these are the different parts of the fabric the instruments and this this is actually uh, the heat transmits uh, transmits in conduction convection and radiative uh, mode and with this formula we can measure the measuring the uh, measuring head pressure is 5 to 30 gram per square uh, centimeter we can vary the pressure this is the instrument okay, where the this is the load cell and fabric is placed here the perforated bottom plate and here the fabric is placed and total guarded plate assembly is kept here. So, as it is going down so we can plot the thickness versus displacement curve the time versus thickness curve. So, what we have observed that we have we wanted to measure the consistency of the uh, temperature. So, the temperature for longer time it gives almost uh, constant there is no significant change in temperature and uh, now let us see 
we have compared uh, different types of uh, 20 different fabrics sample we have taken and the samples the thermal transmission characteristics were measured using three different techniques. The this outer curve it is measured by sweating guarded hot plate. So, that guarded hot plate standard measure measurement technique we have used for the same fabric. Next red one is the used by the alum beta and inner curve is for the de developed instrument. So, what does it show? So, the fabric the same fabric gives three different insulation level the value which we are getting the three different values for the same fabric that means, the sweating guarded hot plate gives a higher insulation value the alum beta gives a little bit lower insulation and the designed developed fabric as instrument gives the lowest insulation value. That means, that and another thing it is uh, to be noted the nature of the curve shape of the curve is exactly same. That means, the sweating guarded hot plate the level of pressure used in sweating guarded hot plate is less that means, effective thickness of the fabric is high for same fabric it is higher thickness that is why it is giving higher insulation. Whereas, in case of alum beta testing the pressure exerted it is higher than the sweating guarded hot plate that is why the fabric gets compressed little bit. So, air pocket is reduced. So, we get lower thermal insulation and the developed instrument where we need to measure the thickness. So, we need to know the thickness at minimum pressure. So, here the minimum pressure is used which is 700 Pascal. So, 0.7 kilo Pascal is the minimum pressure we can use here. So, that is why here the fabric is compressed little bit more and that is why we get the lower thermal insulation, but for comparison purpose for evaluation purpose. So, we cannot compare this value this exact value with the sweating guarded hot plate or alum beta, but the nature of the curve. So, same nature of the curve which indicates this value the value which is given giving uh, which is actually we are getting from this instrument are consistent value. So, using this instrument we have tested the thermal insulation characteristics at different pressure level. So, this is the value the same 20 fabrics were being used here minimum pressure is uh, 7 gram per square centimeter and then we have increased the pressure to 14 gram per square centimeter and then 21 gram per square centimeter. So, from this graph we can see that with the increase in pressure this the thermal th fabric gradually is losing the thermal insulation characteristics. So, this is this gives a, a good indication that a fabric which we have to develop that fabric should not get compressed easily, but if it at all gets compressed it should come out it should have good resilience characteristics. So, that is how so one a fabric when it is a new bulky condition the fabric may give warmth, but after several use after several laundering or pressing the same fabric may lose its warmth due to loss in thickness. So, we will stop here. So, we will continue with the uh, various factors in our next class. Thank you.